uh, first, thank you to uh, my colleagues, uh, Jack Mayer and Peter Saladay. And to my uh, new friends, uh, in, in St. Petersburg. Uh, which is a wonderful city. I've never been to Russia, I've never been to St. Petersburg. So thank you for uh, inviting me. So I'm, uh, I was born and raised in New York City. So uh, I simply say, how are you doing? How are you? I need more. So use these, uh, we call it mood meters, and on your side. Think about uh, how you feel right now. From very unpleasant to very positive or pleasant. And then how much energy you have. From very <laughs> low to very high. So two numbers. Unpleasant to pleasant and low to high energy. So is anyone uh, in the upper right who says A? Is anyone down uh, where it says B? So that's pleasant but kind of tired. Anyone where it says uh, C? Uh, un unpleasant little lower mood? Nobody? And anyone up here in this area? is how are you? Second question, does it matter? Many of you are in HR. So you know that it matters. If you were giving this presentation, where would you want the audience to be? Or B is okay. Maybe not D. Or C. And here's why. It does matter. Because if you're on this side, you're going to be thinking about the, uh, the, the lectures today. You'll be inspired. But if you're on the other side, you'll be much more critical. Thinking, I don't like these slides. In fact, this, his tie, it's an ugly tie. And then, of course, if you're here, that's ridiculous. I can't believe you're saying that. So it does matter how you feel, and I want to make sure you stay on this side. Now, uh, at least in the United States, we are taught that emotions are chaotic. 
крайней мере, в Штатах, я не знаю, может быть, в России также, э, нас учили тому, что эмоции, они хаотичны. Мы управляем. Поэтому оставляем свои эмоции дома. How many of you hear that at work? Кто из вас слышал такое, такое hey, выражение? Emotions have no place at work. Нет, на работе эмоциям не место. That is totally incorrect. Это абсолютно неправильно. There is a much смарter way to think about emotions. Есть гораздо более разумный способ, как воспринимать эмоции. Now, emotions occur when there's a change in the environment. Эмоции возникают когда? Когда а, в среде что-то меняется. It occurs automatically and quickly. Они возникают автоматически очень быстро. It changes what you're paying attention to. И на это вы меняете ваше внимание. It, you have a question? What is the problem? What just happened? Что сейчас случилось? So here, and we were, I know, so here's what happened. I was just talking. And I had a ball. And uh, your name? Alexander. Alexander. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. I threw the ball at Alexander. <laughs> Work with me here, buddy. Okay. And this is what happened. The ball started to come toward Alexander. And he had a, an emotion. What did it look like, Alexander? Right, so keep that. No, I can't. You have to. You have to. Please, so the whole I never did it. Oh, listen, in my life, it. No, sir, no. you're doing it now. It's not what happens with me. Okay, so let's see. Let's see what. Uh, hold it. Hold it. Okay. What is the name of this emotion? How is it called? This emotion. Fear. Okay. Or yeah, fear, surprise. Me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Okay, so uh, let's look at this again. Uh, same thing, it was up like this. Remember, you like this, eyes open. Okay, what are the key features? Of it? And, uh, we would call this more surprise. Okay. The first feature of surprise. Why is this smart? <laughs> what does that mean? What? Why? Why? So he can see what's going on. Then he went like this. Why? <laughs> Get oxygen. Get ready to run away. <laughs> and one other reason, maybe to yell, to scream. Last part. Why is this smart? To catch the ball. Now, this is why we have an emotion. <laughs> let's go on this side. Now, now let's say uh, he is a CEO of a big company. And he says, no emotions at work. You're a professional. You leave your emotions at home. I pay you a lot of money to think, but not to feel. Here's what the CEO does. Oh, I know. You're sitting at your desk. Mr. CEO. The boss. Very professional. CEO. 
I notice an object. I wonder what it is. Could be a ball. Could be a rock. Now, in a university, I study physics. What is the formula to compute the trajectory? What was that formula? Speed divided by the square root of the distance. You now have to uh, add in the relative humidity of the room. Gra gravitational pull. Uh, let me just get my calculator. Okay. I compute a 65% chance that this object will miss me. So I will sit in my chair and not do anything. I'll be a professional. Now, uh, that's what a logical, analytical person does. The problem with that is that very smart, purely analytical people oftentimes get hit in the head with a rock. And that's why emotions are so very important. They are smart, they're intelligent. <coughs> now, aren't you glad you came today? I'm glad. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> okay. Thank, you. Thank you so much. No more balls. But this is very important. Right. Emotions are smart, they have information. They help you make decisions. Some of the research in uh, neuroscience says that without emotions, we actually make bad decisions. Has anyone here, does anyone here have a friend who's ever made a bad decision? A friend. Yeah. Did this friend have a bad feeling before they made the decision? But the facts say one thing. But their feelings are not quite right. What scientists are finding is that emotions help us make a decision. The feelings we have take all the information and help us make good decisions. And that's because emotions contain information. So, for instance, um, um, may I? No, you can. You can. Oh, actually, sure. Um, emotions contain information. So, if I am uh, walking toward you, 
Uh, okay. So I have this face. Yes. And that sends you some information. And are you happy to see me? No. <laughs> Because I'm dangerous. But if uh, actually I'm not good at smiling. Uh, you, know, you have a lovely smile. Could, could, could you <laughs> Now she comes towards you and with a, a wonderful, beautiful smile. <laughs> ah, okay. And so you're happy to see her. Right? Emotions are, are, uh, are information. For me, you're a little worried. But when she's walking toward you, you're more open and welcoming. Thank you. Now, as I said, I'm, I'm from New York City. And I've never been to Russia. So how can I talk to you about emotions? Are emotions uh, specific to a culture? <laughs> well, actually, emotions are universal. <coughs> so, uh, let's say last night you're out on the town. And you're walking down the streets of St. Petersburg late at night. And you come across this animal. What do you do? One in the top and the middle. You run. Okay. Uh, let's say uh, you then turn the street. And you see this animal here. Are you afraid of this animal? The one down here, are you afraid of this animal? Not really. Now, these are not humans. But they still have emotions. They express emotions, and you're all able to understand the emotions. Let's see if uh, St. Petersburg women are similar to other women uh, around the world. Uh, ladies, uh, do you ever go out to a bar at night? <laughs> so, ladies, uh, let's say you're at a bar, uh, you're having a drink with a friend. <laughs> Do you ever have any of these gentlemen approach you? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, this is universal across cultures. And uh, it's universal across species as well. So we all know what he is, he is interested in. <laughs> so if emotions uh, are across different kinds of animals, they also are across different kinds of cultures. We're happy because we gain something of value. And we're sad because we, we lose something. But the specific causes of emotions can vary from person to person. And when we express these emotions, differs from culture to culture. They're called display rules. Uh, 
As we mentioned earlier, the uh, origins of emotional intelligence <coughs> began more than 20 years ago with uh, the work of uh, Peter Saladay and Jack Mayer. And we are focused on what we call an ability approach to emotional intelligence. And there are four abilities that we talked about. Let's look at those. First, you perceive emotions. How do, you, how do I feel? How do you feel? <coughs> Two. Our emotions influence what we think about. Remember before I asked you how you felt? And if you were angry, you're going to attack ideas. The third ability is understanding. Why do you feel the way you feel? And then the fourth ability is managing emotions. So if uh, someone was angry, maybe uh, had difficulty listening this morning, how do we make them less angry? And sometimes, maybe it's a big hug. So those are the four abilities. Uh, now we also can measure this. And there are several ways to do it. I won't talk too much about this this morning. You can ask someone how emotionally intelligent they are. Or you can actually measure their ability. Uh, there is a, uh, a test that we're, we've developed over the years. And it is objectively scored. Let's give you an example. So you take a picture of someone. <coughs> just, just anybody. And and you indicate which emotions are expressed by this person. So a random photo. <laughs> of just anybody you might see. <laughs> so this could be one example. Or here's another one. <laughs> uh, so we have many of these kinds of uh, that's a terrible picture. <laughs> it's, it's upsetting just to look at. Um, so here's an example. There are emotions here, and you have to be correct. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, what we find is that we are not good judges of our own emotional abilities. Now this makes a lot of sense. Because if I'm not good at uh, reading people, and I meet you. Hello, how are you? It's so great to meet you. Now, you have to see her face. Looking at her, what she is saying is, go away. Leave me alone. I don't like you. 
But if I can't read people, no, это, это, если я умею все-таки считывать лица, what do I see? Что я увижу? Oh, she really likes me. А, ты на самом деле я нравлюсь. Right. Because I'm unable to read you. И из-за того, когда, ну, например, тогда, когда я не умею воспринимать человека, считывать то, что у него написано, I never get feedback. Я не умею получать обратную связь. And I will leave you alone. Now you're happy. Сейчас я останусь. Сейчас я уже счастлива. So we find we don't, we are not good at understanding our emotional abilities. То есть мы обнаружили, что мы сами не очень хорошо умеем определять свои собственные эмоции. When we present to CEOs, we tell them the most important predictor of success is IQ intelligence. You want to hire smart people. Raise your hand if you're smart. Поднимите руку, если вы считаете себя достаточно эмоционально развитым. Ну, вот умными, так можно сказать. Все должны понять руку. You are smart people. We want you to be smart. Вы умные люди, и мы хотим, чтобы вы были умными. But you need other skills as well. Ну, нам нужны и другие также умения. And emotional intelligence is one of those. И эмоциональный интеллект — это одно из таких навыков. And what we find is that people who are more emotionally intelligent, have more positive outcomes. Now because of this, uh, we feel we need to teach leaders how to be more emotionally intelligent. И именно из-за этого нам кажется, у нас есть такое представление о том, что нужно учить лидеров быть более эмоционально разумными. So, let's show you how we teach people to be more emotionally intelligent. Давайте я покажу вам, как мы обучаем людей быть более эмоционально разумными. These are called micro-expressions. Это называется микро-выражение. Let's try some. So, we're going to show you a neutral expression. A very quick emotion. And then neutral again. And then you guess what emotion you saw. So let's try one. Neutral. Get ready. What emotion? So happy, happy. Very good. So here's. Now you see it slower. Let's try uh, four of these. So neutral. Ready? Okay. Let's try another one. Fear. 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 We'll come back to that. Last one. Surprise. Let's go back to the beginning. Also fear. Surprise, fear, fear, surprise. When we teach people this, it's even quicker. And so we teach uh, CEOs who aren't always so good at this. Some of these differences. What are the key differences between surprise and fear? Какие ключевые, чем отличается удивление от страха? Какие ключевые характеристики вы можете назвать? Right, so some of you are... Yeah, especially there. Да, особенно у вас eyes. And where else? Что еще? 
So let's say you're meeting with a customer. You're giving them a proposal. Is it important to guess whether they're surprised or afraid? So let's say uh, we've uh, known each other for many years. Uh, we're out at a fancy restaurant. Tiana, would you now? Is it important for me to see whether she is surprised by my proposal? Важно ли мне видеть, удивлена ли она моим предложением? Or afraid? Или боится? I think it's important. Я думаю, что это важно. In this case, very important. В этом случае очень важно. Would you say yes? <laughs> Oops. Let's move on. So it is very important to be able to tell the difference. Uh, which is disgust and which is anger. Yeah, especially here, you want to look here. Now this happens in business and with friendships. Is someone really happy? And this young man is smiling, so he's happy. Do you agree? Well, let's look here. Doesn't he look happy? Right? The eyes. But what, 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 he, he's smiling. Isn't that amazing? Same photograph. It takes great skill to tell the difference. You also have to understand people. These are all pictures of people with their neutral expression. That's a big difference. Now something else we teach people are these display rules. Think about where you work. What's the most commonly expressed emotion in your workplace? Well, what is it? What do you think? Tell us. Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> Anger, surprise. You heard happiness. What else? Interest. Interest? Oh, I'd like to work with them. Oh, I do this in many different countries and there's some mostly similarities. Take a guess as to the most frequently expressed emotion at work. Anger. What's the least expressed emotion in the world? Happiness? Oh, this is a difficult group. Yes. Do you understand why anger is so commonly expressed? Do you understand why anger is so commonly expressed? Yes or no? Yes. Well then say it. Do you understand? Hello? Hello? Yes or no? Yes! <laughs> 
Well then say yes. И тогда скажите да. I don't have time for this. Нет, у меня больше нет времени. You're fired. Все, вы уволены. No, you're not fired. <laughs> Anger is about power. Гнев, он связан с властью, с силой. Most leaders are trained. И большинство лидеров, они специально обучены. To exercise power. Проявлять вот эту власть, силу. After all, they call it work. И после этого они называют это работой. And we pay you. Joy is not expressed because it is seen as unprofessional. At least uh, in, the, in the companies that I've uh, studied. So for instance, if I were to say, would you mind? So I could be the tough boss. And lecture you. But then you do something wonderful. I read the report you wrote. It's it's great. It's great. Thank you. <laughs> and, and this one. Thank you so much, thank you so much, thank you, you're wonderful, you're marvelous, it's unprofessional, but you did a great job and I want to thank you. Now maybe this happens in Russia, I don't know. It doesn't happen very often. So uh, we teach people to uh, read emotions, understand uh, the display rules, but we also teach people that it's not smart to always be happy. Does anyone here work with a, a budget? Uh, does anyone here write reports? Yeah. Let's say you are the last person to look at the budget before you give it to the boss. You are really happy. This budget is done, I've worked very hard. You're full of joy and happiness. You're about to print this and then you say, Oh, this looks good. Let's change the colors. Let's put some graphics in the, in the budget. But meanwhile, there, there are some errors in your spreadsheet. Uh, errors in the in the budget. Where should you be if you are the last person to proof a document? Where should you be on this chart? And some people were saying here. It's not smart to be joyous if you are going to edit a document. Не очень разумно радоваться, если вы последний человек, самый главный, который подписывает документы. So, Dimitri, we're going to talk later. Uh, we're going to do uh, an article. Dimitri, when you interview me for the article, I want you to be very happy. I hope too. <laughs> but when someone edits, the document. They should be over here. Make sure there are no errors. So emotional intelligence is not always about being happy. Now, even though all emotions can be smart, and even though all emotions can be smart, 
there's a special case for positive emotions. Positive leaders uh, have groups that coor are, are better coordinated <coughs> and expend less effort to get the job done. Third ability is understanding emotions. Now remember, each basic emotion has the same kind of cause. But what makes you happy or what you value might differ from person to person. Но uh, то, что у вас кажется важным и ценным, это может различаться от человека uh, к человеку. Let me give you an example. Ну, приведу пример. So, uh, for my wife's birthday. Ну, например, я хочу, вот у моей жены день рождения. Uh, she is a uh, psychologist. Она психолог. Uh, works very hard. И она очень много времени уделяет работе. So I gave her the greatest gift you could ever give. И я подарил ей самый великолепный подарок, который когда-либо мог подарить. It was a gift of time. Это было время. And this, and this is what, this is what I did. Вот Would you like to be, uh, Would you like to be my wife for a moment? <laughs> so, it's your birthday. Ваш день рождения. And I gave her a coupon book. Can you say a book? A coupon book. And in this. It said, I will take you to any dinner you want. Uh, you want to go to a movie? You just tell me and I'll go with you. So all the things my wife loves to do, and I don't like, I put in here. So it's her birthday. Sweetheart, happy birthday. And I have a present for you. Here it is, open the present. So she opens the present. And, and she says, you must look at this face. This exactly looks like my wife. <laughs> So she says, where's my present? I thought, I thought it was a great idea. So what does my wife value? What's important to her? This is what I learned. What brings her joy comes in a box. It's blue. <laughs> there is a, a letter on it. The letter T. Now this is the strangest part. Inside this box is just a rock. A stone. <laughs> Not that big. <laughs> it's very shiny. And she opens this box with this big shiny stone in it. And it brings her great joy. <laughs> now, isn't that terrible? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, I've done this around the world. I have a question for you. Especially for the women of Russia. Tell me the truth. Wouldn't you rather get this, <laughs> this generous from the heart gift of time? Or this shiny, very big stone from Tiffany's? Just show me. Raise your hand. Wouldn't you rather have this gift of time? <laughs> Who would rather have the shiny stone? <laughs> I'm sorry, this is all I have. I have no stone from Tiffany's room. 
So what did I learn? Although there are basic causes for emotion, what brings you joy or happiness may not bring someone else happiness. So if you're a good HR manager, you need to think about not what would make you happy, but what would make the other person happy. And when we do our training seminars, we have you pick a few people that are important to you. And we ask you to write down what makes them, brings them joy or sadness or what makes them angry. Think about uh, your boss right now. Could you fill this out on your boss? The whole thing? <coughs> Some people could. Very important. Make sure you know what makes your boss happy. And angry. To really understand others, you must be able to complete all of these uh, lines. It's important to understand emotions because emotions communicate meaning. It helps you figure people out. And it helps you have people to be more productive. So let's talk about managing emotions. Now, many leaders believe that it's important to never express emotion. Always a neutral expression. There's a big problem with that. Have you ever been in a meeting where someone made you very angry? Let's say you're at a, a big meeting and this person says something about your work, not quite true, you're really mad, and you're thinking to yourself, the end of this meeting, how am I going to get my revenge? I know where she parks her car. <laughs> Gonna let all the air out of the tires. But you're not showing that emotion. You're, we call it, you're suppressing your emotions. You're being a professional. Here's the big problem with that. The more you suppress your emotions, the less information you remember. So at the end of that meeting, you're not sure what you talked about. So you have to learn other strategies. Other strategies? Uh, other ideas? So preventative strategies to prevent the emotion?
or to respond when the emotion starts. <coughs> now, one of the most effective strategies that exists it's called social support. It also has the largest gender difference in women. And there are big cultural differences as well. If you can fill in the names of people, who you can call or email, uh, for help in any kind of situation, the stronger your network, <coughs> the better able you are to cope with stress. When my colleague asked you uh, at the beginning to uh, put your chairs in a circle, you started to expand your network. You know, being here in person allows you to network. One reason we all have these is to meet new people. Is to meet new people. Uh, by the way, which uh, men or women uh, who has who uses social support more, men or women? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, women. Uh, yeah, here's the bad thing. It is one of the most effective strategies. And it's the strategy that men use least. Uh, for many different reasons. So guys, do you have a business card? You have a lot of business cards. <laughs> Make sure you give out your business cards to everyone. <laughs> Introduce yourself. And then email people and stay in touch. And the next time you have a problem, uh, contact your new uh, friends. And what is your name? Alex. Uh, on a break, everyone introduce themselves. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Introduce, look, he's sitting here by himself. Introduce yourself to Alec, be his friend. He will be a happier person. And you will be a better person. Um, now, we put this all together into what we call a blueprint. Four questions. How do you feel? How are these emotions influencing your thinking? What caused these emotions? And how do you manage those emotions? We teach these to children. We teach these to adults. And we can even teach leaders. That is supposed to be fun. 
And this is where people laugh. Okay. It's very simple. But these are great questions to ask. If you are trying to manage others, there's always an emotional component to the situation. Always. Every single time. And so what we argue is that if you don't ask these questions, you're not doing your job. So, in conclusion, emotions contain data. Emotions are flowing throughout your organizations. So you can either try to ignore them, or you can manage them more intelligently, and have emotions help you to think and to decide and act. It's not an option. You have to do it. If you were uh, if you were here giving this presentation, where would you want people to be on this Angry, right? Angry. Go out and fight. <coughs> Sad and crying. At the end of my talks, many people are angry and crying. I want you to be on this side. How can I get you there? Uh, maybe one way is just to stand up. It helps just to stand up. And uh, how about just saying out loud, I feel great. First me and then you. You ready? I feel great. I feel great. I feel